relationship, though, especially when it comes to the sexual connection, the more you can create the um, the magnetic opposition of masculine and feminine, that creates more attraction, which is what chemistry is based on. So it's good to have both of those in the relationship. In fact, relationship does, doesn't have both of those tends to be kind of flatlined. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, or it turns into more of a friendship or a, yeah. or a business type relationship rather than absolutely comes more transactional rather than being something that's more inspiring and growth oriented and deeply fulfilling. It it just changes the relationship. And it there does. are those rare couples out there who are perhaps, um, you know, where a woman is really more comfortable residing mainly in the masculine energy and a man's more comfortable allowing that and being more in that feminine energy. And that can work mm-hmm. as well. What can't work is both people having their foot on the you know, steer on the gas pedal <laughs> and the steering wheel at the same time, right? Because then we're going to collide. Or it's like I like to think of dancing. We I think we've talked about this before, Barry, where it's like if both people are trying to lead the dance, you're doing some form of ballroom dancing. Exactly. Gonna happen. You're going to be stepping all over each other. You're going to be tripping, falling. And it's not going to be graceful or lovely or enjoyable for either person. Yeah. That, and that's the perfect example of the dancing thing. We did talk about this a, a couple of times ago about the Argentine tango. It is, it is recognizing that there is both partners are, need, are needed for it to work well and to be authentic in that place. So, yes, absolutely. And, and in full embodiment, as I said earlier, you know, the masculine and feminine, when they're both fully expressed, are certainly equal, just different. Mm-hmm. And it's the recognition that nobody's being weaker, nobody's losing out. We're just being our true authentic selves. Mm-hmm. So one thing I want to say, again, because I know I talk to women as, do, as you do, and I know some people feel also some resistance. Some women feel some resistance, especially if they're successful. They've worked really hard in their careers or for their independence or self-sufficiency. And they're like, well, I don't want to dumb myself down or I don't want to intimidate a man or I don't want to be I don't want to be having to be less than who I am in order for a man to like me. And I just want to be clear that that's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're saying. Right. No, it's about it's really about full expression or or, or uh, I said like ownership It's about really being a place where you find somebody who sees all of you and loves you for who you are fully versus changing yourself to fit. Cause if you're trying to contort yourself to fit somebody else's vision, it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. It's just not healthy. And, and frankly, it's almost like lying to them because you're not being in full expression self. So owning your fullness, owning your magnificence, whether male or female, whether masculine or feminine is, is what makes relationships so much fun. Mm-hmm. So, so why deny that? Why deny somebody? Yeah, and I think there are ways to share those aspects of yourself, uh, accomplishments, things you're really proud of, things that you're really excited about, things that you've worked really hard for. I think there are ways to share those things without it coming across as a competitive, like one-upmanship kind of thing. That happens sometimes on dates. Uh, You know, a man or a woman is trying to impress each each other. So maybe the man's bragging on about his accomplishments and the woman says, well, yeah, I did such and such and such. And it kind of becomes kind of like, I can top that. I can top that. I can top that kind of conversation. Right. It can. I mean, I mean, so much of this ties into that history and that childhood as well. We're not going to go at that point unless we need to. But a lot of it also is recognitions that, that both male and female like to be praised, like to be a um, witness for how for when we do great things, because for most of us, we're so easily on top of ourselves and we don't do things well. It's nice to actually own the badge of honor of like, I did this right. So I'm like getting kudos from your partner. It's actually a good thing. But as long as there's an understanding between the two partners of what's being asked for and what's being delivered, because it is sometimes, especially on a first date, it's dangerous territory when you start bragging about yourself. It's much healthier on a first date, just a sidebar to that, to be the person who asks the questions, to inquire and get to the person to share because it's much more intimate, much more opening that way. If you're just gonna spend the whole conversation just lecturing your partner on how great things you did, you may not expect a second date. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Well, and I and I think there are ways to share. You do want it to be a conversation. You don't also don't want it to sound like an interview, right? Where you're asking the questions <laughs> like, okay, now let's see. Uh, tell me, you know, <laughs> I get some kind of job interview. <laughs> the interrogation right, right. lights are on, brightly shining over his head. You don't want that kind of vibe either. But um, I think there, I think. For, I'll just give you a quick example of kind of where I'm trying to go with this. Uh, I can remember one of my clients a while back telling me how she'd been on this date with this man and he was talking about several trips he'd been on. And these were international trips and he was pretty excited about it because it was his first real foray into international travel. And then she had been to like 45 countries or something like that. And so then she said something like, well, that's really great. I've been to 45 countries. So this was kind of like a one-upmanship. He was all excited of his first overseas. Yeah. She's like, I've been to 45 countries. So we talked to and she and, you know, it kind of shut him down. So we were talking about this. He, didn't, he wasn't so excited about talking about his trip now. And um, we were talking about this. And, and I said, you know, you know, here's just something to dance with, like for the future. You can say you could say something like that's so amazing that you've been able to go on these trips. You know, acknowledge him, and and maybe ask a follow up. You know, what did you enjoy the most about it, or what was most fascinating? And then if you want to share, you can you could share something instead of saying, "Well, I've been to forty five countries." Right then, <laughs> that might not be the ideal time to say that. You could just say, "In my international travel, some of the things I've loved the most are." seeing other people and cultures, tasting the amazing mm -hmm. food, maybe even share a story about something you experienced in one of these countries where that's kind of like coming from the heart, but in a way where you're going to connect and it's not going to be this, oh, well, I went to 45 countries. Glad you finally got <laughs> out of the country. <laughs> that's not how she intended it, but that's probably that's how actually, Yeah, thought. yeah, I, I totally agree with you. That is that's a great point. And I mean, I mean, and another point possibly could be it's like, you know, when he shares with her, he's got, he's got five countries he's been to, she can ask him, which ones have you been to? Because I've been to a couple myself. I'm not saying a lot, but saying I've been to a few myself. I wonder where he went, because maybe we went to the same place and we can share some common notes. It'd be can be fun that way. It is def definitely when you start to put, and it is, I think it's about when you start putting numbers on things, it gets to be very comparative and it's not a good, no, that's. <laughs> right. So if you can think in terms of connection instead of competition, what's yes. going to create connection? or what's likely to create connection. And a lot of that can come from sharing things more from a heart center place than just a factual center place. And like you said, the numbers, the 45, blah, 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 because that's, you know, <laughs> comparative. Yeah. Um, we get into the math there and that doesn't always work so well. Right. Mm -hmm.